Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home and what a privilege it is for us to be there. Well, we want to hear from you. So send us an email with any kind of question or comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. We certainly pray over all of our emails and answer them too. So give us a jingle via the email. We'd love to hear from you. Well, today we have a great guest. We do. His name is Deacon Bill Williams. He is a doctor. He is an editor in chief emeritus of the Lineker Quarterly. He's also affiliated with CAF Med. So you could go to his website, cafmed.org. Org. We've had many doctors on that we worked with CAFMED, and we're delighted to have Deacon Bill Williams. Yeah, with if us you're today. in the medical field in any way, you could really benefit from the support of the Catholic Medical Association. Uh, CAFMED.org to be together to understand the beautiful integration with medicine, science, and faith. So they work beautifully together, they feed on one another. And also legal issues of being a Catholic in the area of medicine, strong ethics based on the natural law, the teaching of divine revelation, the teaching of the church, and, and taking a strong stand and doing that together. There's that saying that uh, we either hang separately or we stand together, right. united. It's but we beautiful. had a great weekend. Let's go to the weekend real quick. We had because a great we had weekend. Prince Weekend with James Joseph Pinto and R.J. Robinson. Tell right. us a little bit about this. Honor. Well, what we do for all of our grandchildren, and there are 16 of them, when they're potty trained and they can <laughs> spend a night or two away from their parents, because we don't really particularly want crying babies, but um, they come and they spend the weekend with us, and yeah. Nona and Baba, which is you and me, we treat them like a prince if they're a little boy and a princess and we are the king and queen servants the there whole entire weekend yeah. and we just have a blast we just celebrate them whatever they want to do whatever they want to eat um the only requirement is they have to go to church with us on saturday night and they have to be still as they possibly can be yeah. and they were so awesome and they're really they're three and four they're into superpowers and so a very teachable moment, Jim was a Eucharistic minister and went down to, um, you were serving the serving blood the of Jesus, yeah. right? And so RJ turned to me, who's four, and he goes, what is he giving them? And I said, and so I turned to little RJ and I said, oh, Babo is serving them the blood of Jesus. Mm. Now I'm thinking, okay, now Joy, now make this applicable that he could comprehend. So I said, RJ and James, Babo is giving them superpowers. Amen. The Lord's super when we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we get superpowers. And they're looking at me. And I said, and they make us better human beings. And they give us superpowers to love and be nice. And James says, not to be mean. I said, not to be mean. That's and that's it. what the body and blood of Jesus aids and assists if us If you want to know more about Prince and Princess Weekends, there's a whole system that goes with it. It could be something really beautiful you could do for your grandchildren. Up next, Deacon Bill Williams, MD, uh, cathmed.org. We're going to speak about Umane Vitae. It was true then, it's true now on the transmission of life. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today we have a fascinating guest who will be taking us, who will be talking to us about contraception and women's health issue. He's a medical doctor and a deacon, Deacon Bill Williams. He's the editor-in-chief emeritus of the Lineker Quarterly. Great website that you can go to. It's cathmed.org. Well, we welcome you to At Home with Jim and Joy, and you are like being with a relative, a not lovely Italian man from Philadelphia. But you were from Jersey at one point in time, right? From Long Island. There Very you go. Very close, the Very other side. Very close. Pizza, right. good pizza everywhere. Absolutely. Well, good. Well, we're just delighted that you're here. But we want you to tell our family at home a little bit about your journey, because you weren't always deacon. 
that was a journey for you and your faith. Tell our family where you grew up and all about yourself, Deacon. Sure, I grew up in Long Island, Huntington, Long Island. Uh, was baptized Catholic, but then eventually confirmed into the Episcopal Church. Wow. And then like a lot of other people in my generation drifted away into kind of nothingness. But uh, was very fortunate to meet my wo lovely wife, Lorraine. She is lovely. We Absolutely. Have to her in the green room. Yeah, and uh, and then she actually prayed me back into the faith eventually. Mm -hmm. um, so I was confirmed into the Catholic uh, Church on the year of the Holy Spirit, 1998, and then ordained a deacon in 2013. Have three children: Ron, Christina, and Jonathan, and two granddaughters. Emma and Charlotte, who are the joy of our lives. That's so beautiful. And you, and you're in right outside of Philadelphia. Right. And Havertown, the name PA of your parish is Sacred Heart Manoa. Mm -hmm. Great parish. Great. And do you love being a deacon? Oh yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome to be able to serve God's people. Yeah. And you got a great cardinal there. Well, he's not a cardinal. He's Archbishop Shepard. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just made him a cardinal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think he should be a cardinal. Well, maybe Pope Francis is watching. I don't know, but he's a great one. I loved his work on living the gospel of life right which was kind of the united states of america's version of evangelium vitae the gospel of life by the holy father right. and chapu spearheaded living the gospel of life right right to all of our viewers and listeners look that up on the website or contact uh, me uh, jim and joy at ew10.com we'll make sure you can get that booklet very uh, wonderful work what field of medicine are you specializing in? So I am trained in internal medicine and rheumatology, but I've been doing drug development for the past uh, over 20 years now. Okay. Um, so speak to us. Um, you were just kind of listed here that we're going to discuss contraception, but we're discussing contraception, but more than that, I think we're doing it in the context of th the upcoming 50th Jubilee of Umane Vitae, July right. 25th, 50 right. years since yeah. Paul VI, I guess it's an encyclical, uh, about the transmission of life, yep. human life, humane vitae. Um, so share with us a little bit, how did this grip you? Were you always an humane vitae guy or did it make any difference in your life or did you even think about uh, the transmission of human life and contraception? Is it right, is it wrong? Why are you so gripped by this and promoting humane vitae? Well, because I think it speaks to the fundamental issue of wh who and what we are as people. Uh, I was not always uh, on board with this. In fact, I used to be pro-choice, but that's another conversion story. Um, but at the end of the day, when you start to look into what the church teaches about who we are as people, it's so beautiful, it's so compelling that we're an intimate unity of body, mind, and spirit, that we are body and soul, one person. And I think this is one of the reasons why the church always seems to get it right on these big questions where society very often seems to not get it so right. And that was certainly the case in 1968 with Blessed Pope Paul VI and Humane Vitae. Uh, as, as I'm sure many of the viewers know, uh, all of society was going in the other direction. Everybody expected the Pope to overturn the uh, age-old teaching of the church on contraception. But lo and behold, he came out as uh, like one crying out in the, wilder in the wilderness and said, no, you have to understand who we are as people right. and why this is not gonna be a good thing for us. This is not gonna be good. And he made several uh, predic predictions or prophecies, I think, uh, at the time, all of which have been fulfilled. Um, it, when, in some ways you could say that Pope Paul VI predicted the Me Too movement, yeah. right? Because he said that one of the consequences of widespread use of contraception, not only would there be a lowering of moral standards, and an increase in marital infidelity, but that women would be treated as mere objects uh, by men, basically. Right. Uh, and you know, this has just been so apparent recently in the Me Too movement. Right. Uh, and then he also predicted that governments would impose some of these things. Right. So Gen lowering of the moral standards. Yep. Corruption of youth. Yes. Um, and and a disrespect, a lack of reverence for the feminine for a woman and her equilibrium, the complexity of being a woman, right. that men would be <laughs> tempted in such a way just to see them as an object and not understand their makeup holistically, you know, body, mind, spirit, chemically, and who they are. I wanna move back a little bit and then we'll get into the, the those prophetic words or those predictions. Sure. Um, but we're speaking about 
Romani Vitae, which right in the beginning, as, as it starts, it speaks about the transmission of human life, yes. the transmission of the human person, yes. like, that there's nothing more important than that, nothing more beautiful than that. Uh, and yes, while it could be burdensome at times, you know, to, to carry a human being, to have a, a human child, this is central to what it means to be a human being, to be a society. Um, and that the church can speak on this. I, I really believe Umani Vitae is definitive teaching. If you read through the document, um, Paul VI comes to that conclusion and he says, you know, we've been asked as a church here to, to change the teaching and to accept contraception against contraception. And he says, we can't do that. I can't do that. Why? Because the church didn't make this teaching. Yeah. He said, the natural law is the teacher. The created order is the teacher. Therefore, we didn't make the teaching. We can't change the teaching. And I th that's really powerful that this, of course, is a part of divine revelation, but even more, it's just a part of the, the, the natural order of things. We cannot change this. Right, absolutely. And I think that that's you know, so true, and I think it's something that our society needs to understand. The church never lays down rules arbitrarily. The church is always looking to see how we can increase love and truth and justice in the world. That's what we need to focus on. And of course, that all ultimately comes from God. And so God is the author of life. And God has made the marital act the most okay. fundamental human okay. relationship. Okay. Because when you think about it, if you don't have the marital act, you have no human relationships because you have no humans, right? So this is the very, very fundamental thing that has to be respected. And so we, we have to think about that and reflect on it as a society. What are we doing when we're cutting off the transmission of life from the marital act? Right. And you know, blessed Pope Paul VI, he looked at that and he said, this is not gonna be a good thing for society. This is not gonna be a good thing for women, which I think I'm hoping that the Me Too movement will help people start to wake up to this whole reality yeah. of what's happened over the past 50 years. Yeah. And that people will start to realize that this has not been liberating, yeah. right. but it's really been an enslavement. We right, it has been total more bondage. You know, and we, we run a pregnancy medical center and I hear <coughs> on a daily basis the incredible wreckage from, yeah. I can just get a contraceptive, I can have as much sex as I want. And this is what clients are even saying. Now they are, they've conceived a child with this young man and they'll say this to me, no, no, Miss Joy, I'm not even in a relationship. I'm not even in a relationship. I have to take a deep breath and I say, okay, let me explain something to you. When you engage in the most intimate act that two human beings can do that was designed by God, you are in a relationship. And they'll go, mm -mm, no, I'm not. Yeah, well, they have another relationship now with the baby that's conceived within them right. too. Right. And, the, and, and you know, people want to deny this unfortunately yeah. today. And I, I want to say, as we have these conversations, yeah. um, there's a lot of us regarding Umani Vitae and the beautiful standard of that that have failed. We have, you know, over the years, and, and until we understood what this was about, and we had to repent, and, and we have yeah. to, on an ongoing basis, embrace true chastity. So this is not a show about condemning your own failures, even abortion. Um, God can forgive, redeem, and we can make a reparation for those things. So we want to lay that all out. This isn't to lay a guilt trip on anybody, but the standard is the standard, right. and it brings hope and healing to us. Why? Let's let's talk about contraception in the context of of what marriage is and what marriage does. Right. And why why contraception can't be a part of this? Why? Yeah. Because but don't we have? Is the Catholic Church saying you don't have the right to space children? No. Why can't we use contraception to space children? Why is contraception not a good thing? Yeah, so I think that, the, and you know, I just want to come clean too. I mean, I also, you know, fell into the trap and, you know, did the wrong thing for many years. And so, you know, it, praise God for confession, Amen. which has, you know, changed my life and just changed many others. But uh, this is a fundamental relationship. Okay. You know, when people engage in the marital act, the normal consequence, if things go right, is a child. And so to cut that off and to cut that uh, you know, out of the equation, so to speak, right. uh, changes the whole dynamic of things. And it leads us from a, um, from a perspective of giving of ourselves 
so that we can actually engender new life to trying to get something for ourselves. Right. And because of that, it becomes an immoral thing. I mean, things that are generally realized as the church uh, as moral lead to more love, lead to more truth, lead to greater respect of one for the other. But things that are immoral yeah. do the exact yeah. opposite. They turn us more in on ourselves yeah. and become more self-absorbed and self-focused, and that's not the right way to go. Right. Well, thank you so much for laying the foundation. We're going to share more uh, in the next show about Umani Vitae, about contraception, you know, why not? Um, but I think what you shared is just absolutely critical, that marriage is the only vessel that is worthy of containing this most intimate act and relationship. Right. And that as we express ourselves in that marital act, there's that principle of totality, of giving ourselves body, soul, and spirit in the midst of the vows that we take freely, faithfully, fruitfully, permanently, exactly. giving ourselves to someone. And then we have the, the blessing of engaging in such a holy act. And that's, right. that's Humanae Vitae. It's saying the culture is saturated with sex. The problem is they've never really tried true sex, right. which is called marriage. Exactly. Right. right. Okay, we're going to speak more in the next show. We're going to take a break at this point. Go to cathmed.org for more information. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, today, Father Leonard joins us on the show. But first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Joan, yesterday, Pope Francis spoke about John the Baptist. What did he say? Well, greetings from Rome on a day when we had a, a terrible downpour, so we are inside filming. But, you know, we all know that at home is about marriage and family and children. And some pretty wonderful words from the Pope yesterday to ponder on these topics. Yesterday, of course, was Sunday. It was the feast of St. John the Baptist. And at the Angelus, the Pope spoke of St. Luke's gospel story recounting the birth of John the Baptist to his elderly parents, Elizabeth and Zechariah. And what the Pope said was, he said, parents, when generating a child, act as co-workers of God. Every human being, he said, in every human being, there is the imprint of God, the source of life. And he described the role of parents as generating a child is a truly sublime mission that makes each family a sanctuary of life. And he talked about the, he talked about the element of surprise and awe that the family, the parents, the relatives of um, John the Baptist had to experience. And the Pope said, awe, surprise, and gratitude were the sentiments surrounding the birth of John the Baptist. And he pointed out, the Pope pointed out, the faithful immediately understood that something great, albeit humble and private, had taken place. And they all asked themselves, who then, what then, will this child be? Now, interestingly enough, just a total counterpoint on this, just days earlier, the Pope had spoken to a group, an association of family gatherings in Rome, and it was just the opposite topic. It was about the taking of life. It was about abortion, uh, specifically selective abortion. He said, I've heard it is fashionable or at least usual that in the first months of pregnancy, studies are done to see if the child is healthy or perhaps he has something and is not. In the case of the latter, the response usually is, said the Pope, let's get rid of it. And he said, I say this with pain. In the last century, the whole world was scandalized about what the Nazis did to purify the race. Today, we do the same thing, but we do it with white gloves. So indeed, papal words to ponder. Back to you at home. Joan, thank you so much for bringing those beautiful words of the Pope to us and also the prophetic words regarding judgment when we kill the innocent, especially uh, the preborn. Father, it's always good to see your face. Wonderful show here today. Oh yeah, it's great to see you all. Wonderful show, powerful show, uh, much needed information. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bailey's doing great work and uh, especially in, in regards to human life and speaking about humani vitae and then what we just heard from Joan about uh, the Pope just reaffirming right. the teaching 
on the, against abortion and about the dignity of life. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. this is these are things we all need to hear because uh, out there, yeah. things are just seem to be getting worse. Right. The greater culture of death. Yeah. You know. Well, the 50th yeah. jubilee of Umani mm -hmm. Vitae. It's so important mm -hmm. that. Every Catholic should right. have read, if you haven't, read Umane Vitae. Go to uh, Religious Catalog, mm -hmm. look up a study guide to Umane Vitae. I was the editor of that and co-author of it. Mm -hmm. The text is in there. There's a study guide, yeah. a glossary, everything you need. But you need to, to read that. Mm -hmm. And just what we heard from the Holy mm -hmm. Father about generating life. I mean, mm -hmm. just stop generating life, conceiving mm -hmm. a child. The only vessel that can hold that act should be marriage. Yet we're seeing this happen in mm -hmm. test tubes and right. through uh, illicit uh, relationships and mm -hmm. sexuality. And who's the scapegoat in all this? Mm -hmm. The babies. The baby. Contraception against conceiving mm -hmm. children so that when we conceive them, we see it day in, day out. Mm -hmm. People come to us and said, I, I didn't mean to conceive a child. This is a wrongful conception. Then this right. baby has to die. Sixty million times we've aborted babies. And this isn't to condemn, but this is where we really are. And, and we need to repent as a nation, yeah. understand the, mm -hmm. the awe and the beauty of a human being. We need mm -hmm. to see uh, sexual relationships from the eyes of children, because mm -hmm. that's what's going to be created. It's mm -hmm. not just about what yeah, you right. want to do as, as adults. It's not adult-centric. It should be baby-centric. Mm -hmm. Look at the babies. Look through their eyes. What are we going to do to them if we conceive them mm -hmm. outside of marriage and that yeah. commitment? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, and this is something that uh, Pope Paul VI wrote many years ago in, in *Humani Vitae*. It uh, was sort of a, a prophetic word. Absolutely. You know, all of these things were outlined about what would happen if, 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 uh, if, if, if you know, the, the world took on the, you know, to engage in this uh, contraception, the pills and different uh, means yeah. of uh, eliminating pregnancies. Yeah. And and look at we're seeing all that today. We're seeing Amen. this uh, death and destruction. You know that. We see it in human life. We see it also in family life. Yeah. You know, there's just so much there. You know. Well, we're going to have uh, Dr. Bill Williams mm -hmm. back on with us. Yeah. He's going to speak to us about about uh, the prophetic words, mm -hmm. like you said, of Paul the Six and how blessed Paul the Six mm -hmm. and how these things have come to pass. But also how we could at this time mm -hmm. be prophetic in our right. time to lift up the sanctity of marriage mm -hmm. and the family and the generation mm -hmm. of human life and the vessel that holds that mm -hmm. marriage. This is our time, yeah. this is our day. We should not shrink back. And that's back. a call, that mm -hmm. is a call for, for right. families is to be the word, to teach the word, be the word and prepare the children so that they can proclaim the word and with it. their lives out I in society. It. Pray that we could do yeah. that and give us a blessing to empower us to do so. Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for your words of life, God. And God, we ask you, Lord, to do great things as these words come into us, Lord. Let them bear great fruit always. Protect our families, Lord. Protect us, Lord, from the culture of death. Mm -hmm. And may Almighty God bless you all with his peace and strength, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Marriage and family is God's plan to transform the world, and he will prevail. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.